My name is Dr. Elisa Schwartz, and I'm the Director of Artist Initiatives here at Creative Capital. My pronouns are she, her, and I have long dark hair. I'm wearing a white shirt and a navy blue jacket, sitting in front of a window, a bookcase, and a filing cabinet. I'm joining you today from the unceded native land of the Lenape people, also known as Manhattan, New York. I encourage you all uh, to introduce yourselves if you haven't already by placing your names, pronouns, and locations in the chat. The purpose of today's info session is to give you an overview of the Creative Capital Grant application and to answer any questions. For a more detailed guide though, please see the application handbook, which is available on the Creative Capital website. Um, and my colleague Isaac will be dropping the link to that in the chat so you can find it there. I also wanna emphasize that the application is currently live. You can apply today, right after the info session if you want to. It takes under one hour to complete, so I hope that all of you will be applying to the Creative Capital Grant and letting us know about your wild, groundbreaking ideas. It's my pleasure to be speaking you today, uh, to you today about Wild Futures, Art, Culture, Impact. This is the one-time theme for the next grant application cycle in 2023 and 2024. Each grant provides varying amounts, up to $50,000, professional services, and a community of fellow awardees and other professionals. We seek experimental, risk-taking projects that push the boundaries formally and thematically and venture into wild, out there, never before seen concepts and future universes, real or imagined. Ultimately, we seek proposals for groundbreaking new work, including, but not limited to, work that attends to the many relationships between social, economic, and environmental justice, and advances the global dialogue around critical issues impacting the sustainability of artists, our communities, our planet, and beyond. We will be funding 50 projects in 2023 in performing arts, technology, and literature, and 50 projects in 2024 in visual arts and moving image or film. We invite socially engaged projects though in all of the above categories, with the understanding that art is by nature anti-disciplinary, interdisciplinary, and multidisciplinary. What does this mean exactly? I wanna give you a sort of more concrete idea of the kind of work that we fund. We fund dance, we fund theater, we fund music, we fund jazz, we fund technology, we fund literature, we fund drawing, painting, photography, sculpture, installation, time-based work, moving image, um, sustainable work, and socially engaged work. Sorry, my slide didn't come up there. Socially engaged work and sustainable work. All of these ways of working fit into our disciplinary categories. Um, and we invite artists to submit their proposals based on which area experts are most suited and qualified to review the project proposal. With again, the understanding that radical art is often something that by nature defies or challenges disciplinary categorization. By choosing to apply within a certain disciplinary category, we're asking you to choose how you want to frame the discussion around your work and to indicate to us which experts are most qualified to evaluate your project proposal. So this is really a moment for you as the artist to tell us something about how you want your project to be evaluated and received. I'm now going to go a little bit deeper though into the application process. All right, um, there are three stages of the application, round one, round two, and round three. Round one is the letter of inquiry round, and it is what is currently open. Here, we're going to be asking you for demographic information about yourself, a project title and description, a resume, bio, and website, and you'll be answering six project questions, which I'll go into in a little bit more depth in just a second. We streamlined this part of the application significantly from previous years, so it now should take less than one hour to complete. 
Here, we really want you to put forward your amazing idea to tell us what it is about your idea that is so exciting. And it's this that we're going to be focusing on in the first round. The second round, if you're invited to move forward to the second round, is where you can tell us more of the project details. That will include a one-page itemized budget, a one-page timeline, and up to five work samples. The final round is panel review, where you'll provide us proof of your eligibility, as well as some optional project updates. Though with that overview in mind, I'd like to delve a little bit deeper into the six questions that you'll be asked to answer for the letter of inquiry. The first question is how does your project take an original and imaginative approach to content and form? And here we ask you to please be as specific as possible. So here we're asking you to tell us how the project is pushing boundaries, taking risks, and exploring an idea in a new or different way. Projects should challenge the status quo and spark conversations in new and innovative ways. And remember, innovation can occur in a variety of areas like form, function, content, or technicality. So this is really a place for you to tell us how you understand innovation in your project. The second question asks you to please place your work in context so that we may better evaluate it. What are the main influences upon your work? This is an opportunity for you to explain not only what your work is about, but also how it fits in to a broader discourse, be that within the field of art or outside of it. Again, this is a space where we ask you to be as specific and concrete as possible. The third question is what kind of impact artistic, intellectual, communal, civic, social, political, environmental, et cetera, do you hope your project will have? What strategies will you employ to achieve the desired impact? This question is a chance to explain what you wish to accomplish with your work. The impact of your project could be specific, impacting a smaller audience with a specific set of concerns, or it could be more expansive, engaging a wide variety of people across the country. Again, this is a moment for you to tell us how you understand and conceive of impact within the scope of the project. The fourth question is, who are the specific audiences and communities that you hope to engage through this project? Think about audiences for this question um, outside of a general grouping like theater lovers or readers and tell us more precisely who exactly is your work for? This question allows evaluators to see what kind of individuals, communities, or organizations would be most responsive to and appreciative of this project. The fifth question is how might your proposed project act as a catalyst for your artistic and professional growth? In what ways is it a pivotal moment in your practice? Creative Capital is very invested in funding projects at pivotal moments. And we want to know how you as an artist envision your work changing in the next few years and what part of this proposed, uh, what part this proposed project will play in those goals. This response really provides us with a sense of your artistic ambition and your level of engagement with professional development. And it lets us know whether or not the Creative Capital Grant would be a good fit. And finally, the sixth question is how would our non-monetary services help you realize your goals for this project and or your long-term artistic and professional growth? The Creative Capital Grant provides awardees with services that include strategic planning, legal and financial counsel, community building, networking, and communication support. So let us know if any of these services would be helpful to you and how. One feature of the Creative Capital Grant is that we allow you to apply as a collaborative. Collaborations, including families, should submit one application. A collaborator or a collective member is someone that we consider to be a co-owner of the project and a generative part of the team. Collaborators can be associated with only one proposal, so that means you cannot submit an individual proposal as well as a proposal on which you are a collaborator and no changes to collaborations may be made after submission. 
I want to leave a good amount of time to answer all your questions and to get to know a little bit more what you're thinking about and your concerns. So I just have a couple more things that I'll cover. One is the timeline of the 2023 grant cycle. It is open, as I said, um, today. It was open March 1st and it will close April 1st, 2022. This means that you have one month to submit your letter of inquiry to us. In July, round two advances will be notified. In September, round three advances will be notified. And in January, 2023, we will announce the 2023 Creative Capital Awardees. And finally, I'd like to just go over the eligibility criteria for the grant. Um, the grant uh, is open to artists who are eligible to receive income in the United States. So artists who are US citizens, permanent residents, or O-1 visa holders. It is open to artists who are at least 25 years old. You must be a working artist with at least five years of professional artistic practice. You cannot be enrolled in a full-time degree granting program, and uh, you cannot be applying as an individual or collaborator on more than one project. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to your questions and see how many I can answer in the hour that we have together. Um, I will say though, if I don't get to your question or if you have a question that occurs to you later, you are always welcome to email us at awards at creativecapital.org. So with that, I'll stop sharing my screen. There we go. And see your questions. I see we already have quite a few. Um, the first is, can artists, uh, collectives, and organizations apply? Yes, please see the collaborator and collective guidelines in the application handbook. Um, all right. Uh, what determines your grant award size? Um, here, I'm not sure if you mean the amount of uh, money we're able to give or the amount of artists that we're able to award. Um, the short answer for both of those, though, is our funding. Um, and I should say, uh, this past year, the 2022 awards, we increased our fund, um, number of awardees from 35 artists to 50 artists. Um, so we were certainly committed as much as possible to serving what we know is a very important need out there for project funding and support. What are the specific requirements or credentials that are needed to apply to this grant if you are an independent filmmaker looking to raise money uh, for going into production? Um, so uh, if you're a filmmaker, I would suggest that you look at the 2024 award cycle, though of course it's up to you what discipline you'd like to apply in. And the credentials are the same as everyone. You must meet the eligibility requirements. And other than that, you just have to tell us about your project idea during the letter of inquiry round and really emphasize why this is a bold, groundbreaking, innovative project that creative capital should support. For those applying as a collaboration team, do we put our joint collaborative bio in the artist information section or do we put a note to see the attached bios for each of us? You'll have room for each collaborator to put your bios um, as individuals as well as your uh, bio as a collective. See. Um, uh, all right, uh, we see, uh, hi, I'm an interdisciplinary artist of 25 plus years experience with some writing credits, but most of my produced work is visual music and performance. Am I eligible for the literature grant? Yes, eligibility um, and also the disciplinary category um, is really up to you to define. We know that artists work across many disciplines and that a lot of artwork is by nature, multidisciplinary, antidisciplinary, interdisciplinary. So um, if what you are proposing is something that you want to be evaluated as a literature project, then the literature category is the right category for you. Uh, could we provide examples of technology projects we are giving grants to? Um, I think there's too many examples for me to name right here, but I'm going to uh, suggest that you check out our website. Um, perhaps my colleague Isaac can drop a link to our artist A to Z listing, uh, which shows you all of the technology projects you can filter by discipline um, that we funded in our 20 plus year experience. What collaborative specifically form, uh, what did, I'm sorry, uh, let me try and understand this question. Um, 
Okay, I see. Uh, this person is asking if they can apply with a collaborative specifically performed to create a performance project, as well as have artists within that collaborative apply for individual projects. The answer to that is no. You can either apply as part of a collaboration or you can apply with an individual project because we consider every member of a collaborative to be a creative capital awardee, um, you cannot apply in both categories because then you would be an awardee twice. So the short answer is you must either apply as part of a collaborative or as an individual artist, you're unfortunately unable to do both. Uh, please elaborate um, on the differences between question three and question four, between impact strategies and community audience. Um, so here, really, what you can think about is happening over these six questions is that we're kind of scaling out. So we're beginning with your project idea, and then we're ending with asking you to think about the immediate audience, the broader impact, and then also coming back to this question of your overall trajectory as an artist and your relationship to professional development. So the key difference between questions three and question four is um, what strategies will the project take to engage an audience? And then how is the work really situated within a broader world or context for reception? Um, and then let's see. Uh, so can two people apply as a team? Yes, you should apply as a collaboration. What if you are applying in technology, but your technologist designers are part of your collaboration, but not in the two person applying? Um, this is a good question because it sort of gets to some of the differences between who is a collaborator versus perhaps a um, fabricator on a project. A collaborator for the purposes of creative capital is a co-owner of the project. They are um, someone who has equal ownership, investment, generative relationship to the project. Um, if that does not describe the work that, say, a technologist or designer is doing, they would more properly be a fabricator on the project um, or perhaps you know, a key professional working on it. Um, so only apply as a collaboration if all members of that collaboration are someone, you know, are, is, are people everybody considers co-owners of the project. We understand that people work with a lot of different kinds of professionals and experts, though, to realize their work. And those would be people that we would not consider uh, collaborators. Um, all right, is a CV accepted in place of a resume? Yes, as long as it fits the page limit requirements. You can take a look at those, again, in the application handbook. Um, I have a project that's socially engaged theater, and depending on the context, I can push it more in the direction of theater or more in the direction of socially engaged framework. Do you favor socially engaged projects over all others? I frame it as socially engaged project. If I frame it as a socially engaged project, will it have more strength? This is a good question because I think it gets to something that you know I know I've certainly done. I'm sure you know all of us have some experience with, which is trying to imagine what's a best fit for the grant um, and to think about how what we're proposing can best fit the grant criteria. Here, I would really encourage you, though, to say and present the project in a way that best frames the idea. Um, there's no preference given to one kind of way of working over another. Um, again, we understand that socially engaged work takes place in every single discipline and can take place through a variety of media. Um, so here, I would say the most important thing to emphasize is the idea. And if the idea is something that is best phrased through the language of social practice and social engagement, that's the way to go. If the idea is really engaging the questions and techniques of theater, then that's the way to go. Um, so I know that might not be a satisfying answer, but I guess the short answer is do what you feel is most authentic to the project. That is going to best present your idea. Uh, what about interactive social uh, practice projects with writing and literature components? Um, it's a great question. Again, we expect that these disciplinary categories are going to be very broad, and we expect that each one is going to contain social practice or socially engaged works. Um, so here, really, it's about giving you choice about where you want to situate your project. A socially you know, engaged work or an interactive social practice project that has literature components could certainly be evaluated within the criteria of literature. It might be something if it contains visual components, though, that might also fit within the parameters of visual art, say, installation. So really, this is a place for you to exercise agency and choice. If you 
want the criteria of literature and people who are experts in literature to be the people in the room discussing your project, that is the right category for you. And if not, then consider where you would prefer to situate the work. Um, let's see. Uh, how do you figure out an accurate budget? Some costs vary over time. Um, that's a great question. And uh, we actually have uh, some budget uh, helpful tips in the application handbook. So I would suggest taking a deeper look at that. Um, the kind of creative capital advice though, that I want to highlight is make sure in any budget, it should have um, income and expenditures. And always remember to pay yourself. This is um, a work that you do professionally. Um, so always remember to treat yourself as a professional. Um, but for more details, please check out the application handbook and the guidelines in there. Um, let's see. Uh, I started an application, but I wrote working title. Is there any way to change it? Yes, uh, you can make changes to the application right up until you submit it. So you should be able to change any field. Um, after you submit the application, you're unfortunately not able to make any further changes. Right. Uh, can I define what is considered technology? Um, that's a great question, because certainly technology is a broad category, and it's something that artists, I would say, from the invention of photography and films to the invention of acrylic paint, um, have been using in their practices in a variety of ways and driving, in many ways, uh, developments um, in the way that we understand the relationship between media and practice. Um, so the real question here, I think, would be, whether technology and all of its stakes, this idea of emerging media, of new um, ways of creating representations in the world, um, the use of things like AI, um, software, different kinds of machine technologies, whether this is the right framework for your work. Um, I know that's perhaps a bit unsatisfying. Um, I think technology is something that has broad parameters. So I'd say maybe the best way to consider whether your project fits within that category is to take a look at our website, think about the kinds of technology projects we funded, and also think about the kind of experts, again, that you want in the room. If you want people paying attention to the innovative use of technological components in the work, then technology is the right category for you. If you want people paying attention to something else, then perhaps look at the other categories. Um, what category would be the best fit for an audio-based project? Um, again, I think that's something that would be hard for me to answer outside saying that consider what kinds of experts you want in the room. Um, audio work could certainly fit within the parameters of performing arts. It could certainly fit within the parameters of technology too, depending on how that audio is being produced and how it's being you know, disseminated and received. Um, so again, here, I think this is a moment um, for you to exercise creative choice as an artist. What category, oh, sorry, I already answered that one. Um, should you apply as a nonprofit organization or a personal artist? You should apply as a personal artist. Um, the purpose of the Creative Capital Grant is to fund art projects, um, projects that are authored by artists. Um, it's true that some projects go on to become larger initiatives, nonprofits, businesses, but they ultimately begin as artwork. Um, so we would recommend, um, and not we recommend, you should apply as an individual artist. Uh, next question is, how is the Wild Futures theme different from previous years in terms of innovation? That's a great question. In many ways, it's kind of just a reaffirmation of what we've been committed to in our 20 plus year history. As many of you might know, Creative Capital was actually founded after the NEA, the National Endowments for the Arts, um, stopped a lot of their funding to individual artists. So the mission of Creative Capital has always been to fund freedom of expression. So since our inception, we've always been about making impossible work possible, work that's not necessarily getting support from other sources. So Wild Futures, in many ways, is not so much a departure from anything we've seen before, but a reaffirmation of our core mission and core beliefs that art leads the way in kind of creating the world that we want to see. Um, let's see. Um, uh, 
Okay, sorry, I was trying to find questions that are a bit different from the ones I've answered before. Um, but again, if I don't get to your question, please feel free to email us and we'll answer it via email. Um, is there a full list of support services for awardees available online? Um, you can see the areas of support that we offer under the Education and Programs tab. Uh, we don't yet have a full menu available um, to the public of every single thing we have. We are constantly building it out, um, but you can get a sense of what kinds of areas of support, for example, financial planning, um, goal setting, things like that, on our website if you look under the Education and Programs tab. Um, let's see. Um, do we have any preference for projects that are collaborations or individual, or will you award an equal amount of awards for each type? We don't have a preference. Um, again, the main criteria really has to do with the project idea. Um, so we want to know what the project idea is, how it deals with this question of innovation, what risks it's taking, how you're situating this bold new work in the world. That's the thing that matters most, and we don't have a preference of whether you're applying as a collaboration or an individual. Um, let's see. Um, are you able to combine literature with another category? Um, this is a good question, and unfortunately, the answer is no. Um, you must pick one of the three main disciplines that you're going to be applying within for the 2023 application cycle. That's performing arts, technology, and literature. Within that, you can choose up to three subcategories. So for example, within performing arts, you might choose theater, dance, and opera. Um, so there is some... Um, way that you can specify where you want your project to be situated within each discipline. Unfortunately, you have to pick just one as an evaluation framework. Um, oh, this is a good question. Uh, what is the definition of professional artist? Uh, for us, a professional artist is someone who is not in school and someone who has a five year plus track record of experience of putting their work out there in at least some public way. This doesn't have to be um, continuous experience. It can be broken up. And this doesn't have to be experience all in one field. Um, for example, if you are a performing arts uh, artist, but you spent uh, a number of years working as a writer, we count all of that as professional experience. Um, so a professional artist is very broadly defined for us. Mainly we wanna see that you've been out there putting your work out in some public context for at least five years and that you're no longer a student. see. Um, oh, this is a good question. Uh, is there a separate timeline for projects that fall under the themes for the 2024 cycle? Um, yes. So it will be similar to the 2023 cycle, uh, but it will be next year. So this is really giving you a preview of what's coming down the pipeline um, from Creative Capital for the next two years. The 2023 cycle, which is open to performing artists, technology artists, and literature artists, is currently open. The 2024 cycle will open next year with around a, a parallel timeline. Um, let's see. Um, sorry, I'm trying to get questions that are a bit different um, than what we've seen before. Um, we have a lot of discipline questions, a lot of budget questions. Um, all right. Uh, well, I'll just reiterate this one. Um, someone asked if you are a visual artist, you still need to submit an application for the 2024 year by April 1st. No, you should wait until the 2024 cycle opens, which will be next year. Uh, all right. Um, Uh, here's a question, it seems like something I haven't addressed. Do early career artists ever receive this award or is this award more for those who have clout or enough experience, artist residencies, shows, art galleries or projects uh, executed already? That's a great question. Um, one of the things that we are looking for is to fund a broad range of artists. 
This is true in terms of the regions where artists are from. This is true in terms of the kinds of disciplines and work that we're seeing. It's true in terms of the identity of the artist. Um, and it's also true for career stage. So this is absolutely a grant that emerging artists can receive. And actually we'll ask you in the grant um, information when we're asking you demographic uh, questions to identify yourself as an emerging, mid-career or established artist. So you can also prefer not to answer. We ask this question precisely because of uh, this concern. We wanna make sure that we're funding artists at every stages of their careers. This adds, I think, to the richness of the awardee pool and the way in which also our artists, um, you know, once awarded uh, can be a resource to each other. So it's a great question. Um, all right, uh, let's see. Um, um, oh, here's a question that I don't think I've answered. What is the time frame given to the awardees after being extended to, uh, the grant? Another way, once we get it, what is the expected production window? Uh, it's a great question. Um, most creative capital projects are finished within three to five years. So we expect that this is something that is going to take a while. Creative capital is really invested in having a long-term relationship with you as an artist. Um, so we wanna be there from the different phases uh, of your, um, the production of your work. Um, so three to five years is the average amount of time most projects take to complete. If you are on a longer timeline though, um, you can always contact us um, and we really work with you to make sure that you're supported for as long as you need to be. Right. Um, let's see. Uh, okay, here's a question I don't think I've covered. Um, can you discuss more about the selection process? Is it competitive? Are you gathering all of the submissions on April 1st for the panel to review or will submissions be reviewed as they are received? Um, that's a great question. So uh, we have, uh, as I mentioned, three rounds of review, um, and these correspond to the three stages of the application. Um, so on April 1st, we will uh, close the application, so you'll no longer be able to um, submit applications to us for the 2023 cycle after the deadline on April 1st. Um, we uh, compile all of the applications um, and uh, after um, checking everything for eligibility, send them to external review. Our external reviewers are experts in their field. We don't identify them during the application cycle, um, but we usually publish who they are on our website afterwards. Um, and they are people who are looking at the project proposals based on three criteria. The most important criteria, as I've mentioned, is innovation. Have they seen this work before? Is this work doing something new and doing something interesting, important, risk-taking, impactful um, that aligns with uh, this sort of mission of creative capital to fund groundbreaking work? The second criteria has to do with feasibility and capacity. Um, do the, does the evaluator based on their expertise think that this project is feasible? Um, and then finally, timeliness. Is this the right time? for the artist applying with this project to receive this kind of support. Um, and this is why we say that this isn't really a grant that's best suited to people who are students. Um, you already have a, quite a lot of support sometimes uh, when you are a student. Um, so this is something really that's meant to be uh, a catalyst for a pivotal moment in an artist's career with a pivotal project. So that's something the evaluators are looking at. Um, then uh, the uh, second round um, will again go to external review. There they'll have more materials to review, your budget, your timeline, your work samples. Um, and then the final round of review is the panelist round. Um, and it's from there that the ultimate awardees will be chosen. Um, let's see. Um, and find, uh, oh, here's a question I think is a bit different. Um, can I apply with my recent work? I would like to transform, upgrade my recent work. This is a good question because really creative capital um, is best suited to new projects. We wanna fund a new project. We want to make something that wasn't necessarily possible before possible. 
That said, if you feel that you've been working on a body of work that's going to be radically rethought for the grant, uh, with the grant, that you're going to um, be able to transform an existing work or an existing way of thinking or body of work in a significant way, we're open to reviewing that in your proposal. So I would say go ahead and submit an application, a letter of inquiry, um, and we'd like to see you know, what, what, what the specifics are. That said, um, just keep in mind that this is a project uh, grant that is really meant for the creation of new work. So new work can be something that is completely new. It can also be a radical reimagining of something you've explored before. Um, so really the emphasis should be on the idea that it's, it's transforming or it's brand new in some way. All right. Um, Uh, let's see. Um, sorry, I'm trying to just find some questions that are a bit different than the ones we've answered before. Um, well, there's a couple actually, I guess, about the, the non-monetary support. So I'll, I'll, I'll touch on that subject again. Um, so in addition to the monetary support, we offer uh, professional services. And these are in a variety of areas that you might need sort of expertise on as an artist. Um, these include legal services, financial planning services, financial literacy, tax services, things like that. Um, they include professionals who are um, experts in social media, in websites, in uh, communication campaigns. Um, we also recently uh, have added some experts in public art. Um, the best way to get a sense of the kinds of experts we can put you in touch with through these professional consultations is to look at our website and see what kinds of public facing workshops that we've had. Um, often these reflect the kind of professionals who are in our network. Um, that said, you can also take these workshops, um, whether or not you are a creative capital awardee. So if you want any of this advice, um, things like financial planning, things like uh, social media for socially engaged artists, um, we welcome you to take uh, these workshops with us um, and they're available to sign up with on our website. Uh, in addition to that, we also host several artist gatherings. Um, it's obviously for past couple of years been a little bit difficult to bring everybody together because of the circumstances with COVID. Um, but we're very committed to making sure that artists have space to be with each other and to bring people together the ways in which that's possible. So another core um, element of what you receive as a Creative Capital Awardee is access and participation to a community, um, which will be made possible through various kinds of artist gatherings when, when safe. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, here's a good question. Would a film be eligible if post-production is complete and seeking funding for costs related to film festivals and distribution? Um, this I'd say is probably something that would be less competitive um, because it relates, I guess, to that um, sort of timeliness piece. Um, what we're really looking to fund are projects that are in slightly earlier stages of development. So um, something again, that's maybe three to five years out from completion. Um, if you think though, that the sort of way that you're thinking about distribution, you know, really is something that we should take a look at. Um, no project is disqualified based on you know sort of uh, it being um, further along in production. Um, though my general advice would be that this is something that is uh, more competitive for projects that are in earlier stages of conception. Oh, this is a good question. Can I share some common characteristics of a winning proposal? Um, that's a great question. Uh, it's hard to share specific specific qualities that they have in common um, in terms of content, but I do think they have something in, uh, in common in terms of, of style. Um, so I think that the most competitive applications, the successful ones, are ones that are clear, ones that give a very concrete sense of what the work will be like, and ones that really attend to that innovation criteria, that really answer the questions that we're asking about why now, why this work, what's it going to do in the world? 
Um, something I often say uh, in the context of the classrooms when I'm, you know, people are asking me about uh, grant applications and artist statements um, is to think about this as a kind of strategic piece of writing. It's a writing that's meant to communicate to a reviewer on the other side who doesn't necessarily know you, doesn't really know the context of your practice. So you want to make sure that all the necessary information is in there in a clear, concise, and um, accessible way. So I'd say that um, what the sort of winning proposals have in common, in addition to being groundbreaking ideas, things that really impressed us in terms of their innovation, is their clarity. They give us a sense just from reading the proposal of what the work will be. All right. Um, let's see. Um, Um, find questions I haven't asked before. Uh, this is a good question. Uh, can an experience in the culinary arts be added to artistic experience? Um, yes, you know, if, uh, again, I would uh, say that, you know, the, the sort of um, uh, challenge might be to articulate the project in one of the disciplinary categories um, that we are, have evaluators in. Um, so there I would say choose wisely with which category you're picking. Um, but in terms of, you know, whether artistic experience, uh, you know, whether culinary arts can be counted towards artistic experience of thinking about yourself as someone with experience as a professional artist. Yes, we really just want you to be someone who's out there in some kind of public way working. Um, let's see. Yes, that one. Um, Oh, here's a good question. Can I speak to the difference between uh, literary arts, uh, or sorry, the literary category for us uh, with the Creative Capital Grant and the Arts Writers Grant, which is uh, another grant um, uh, that you can find on our website um, that some of you might have heard of. Um, so that's a great question. Um, the Arts Writers Grant funds arts writing. So these are projects that are looking and evaluating art in the world, usually in a nonfiction parameter. Um, and you can see from their website that there's different categories you can apply in, long form, short form, books, articles, things like that. For us, uh, literature is a bit broader. Um, so you can be writing a piece of fiction, uh, you can be writing poetry, it can be experimental. All of these um, would be uh, possible for the literature category for the Creative Capital Grant. Um, you don't also don't have to be writing about art. You can be writing about anything. Um, so you can be any kind of writer and apply to the literature category. The Arts Writers Grant, as far as I understand it, and I should say, um, please uh, look at their website. I'm not uh, an expert on their grant process. They're open to people who really consider themselves arts writers, writing about the field of art. Um, let's see. Uh, So someone asks, uh, can you apply to 2023 as a performance artist and 2024 as a visual artist? Um, does this April 1st LOI cover both apps? Um, you can apply to both, but they are separate cycles. So this letter of uh, inquiry does not cover both applications. If you're applying to the 2023 cycle as a performing artist, the letter of inquiry should just address the project that you're proposing in that context. If you apply again the next year, um, you know, that will require a new letter, new letter of inquiry. Uh, all right. Um, this is a good question. Do you weigh more heavily MFAs with long wrap sheets of exhibitions or, uh, or as much or more on the quality of the work samples in conjunction with the expression of a written idea proposal? Um, so this is a great question. It's about the idea. Um, we don't really, you know, feel that strongly about whether you need to have an MFA or what kind of experience, you know, counts as an artist. If you look at our website, 
we have found amazing artists all over the country doing innovative work with a variety of different experiences. Um, so you do not have to have an MFA. You do not have to have a long history of exhibition to be successful for this grant. You just have to have an amazing idea and the capacity to execute it. And that's what matters to us most. Uh, do we have a diverse set of judges looking at the proposals? Yes, we do. We work very hard to make sure that the evaluators for our review process are coming from not only um, different disciplines um, and our experts within their field, coming, but also coming from different areas of the art world. So um, people who work as artists themselves, nonprofit, uh, do nonprofit work, people who are involved in various institutions, people who teach, things like that, um, and also represent a variety of different identities. Um, so it's very important to us to make sure that the people looking at the work are just as diverse as the people applying to the work on every single level. Um, so that's something we put quite a lot of work into um, and are very proud that we have um, quite a few different kinds of experts and ways of working and identities of experts represented. Um, let's see. Um, let's see. And I should say also, if I'm not answering your question, um, it might also be because it's a very specific question to your proposal. And I would encourage you, if it's not answered uh, in the more general advice I'm giving, um, to please email us and we'll, we'll try and help answer your question as best as possible. Um, all right. Uh, is the application handbook downloadable on the website? Yes, it is. Um, maybe I'll ask my colleague Isaac to drop the link again. It's downloadable as a PDF. Um, and very comprehensive, so please do take a look at it. Um, let's see, what else? Um, um, some more questions about how we're defining professional artist. Um, again, very broadly, um, really just can't be a student. Um, you have to be out there working in some kind of way. Um, all right. Uh, let's see what else. Uh, here's one, I'm graduating from school this May. Can I still apply? Um, the answer is yes, you just cannot be a student by the time that you receive the, uh, the award, if you receive the award. Um, that said, I do really suggest that you think about the timeliness of the grant support. Is this the best time for you if you're just graduating from school to receive this kind of support? Um, it might be really you're the expert on that. You, you, know, you tell us, um, but that might be one thing that comes up if you're applying um, and you are graduating, you're, you're, not, you're not quite out of school yet. Um, here's a great question. Um, so you might've noticed on our website that we are actually also administering another grant, which is the Hewlett 50 Arts Commissions for Media Art. So this person asks, does the Hewlett 50 C count as an application to creative capital considering both are in the LOI phase? The answer is no. Um, you can apply to the Creative Capital Grant, and you could also apply to the Hewlett 50C uh, Grant for Media Arts. Um, though, if you do put a plan on applying to Hewlett, um, please take a closer look at that application. That application is open to nonprofit organizations who are working in partnership with a lead artist, um, and it's even a bit more specific, it's open to uh, nonprofit organizations based in the Bay Area who are working with a lead artist. So if you're an artist right now who's uh, in this info session, you might be interested in applying to Hewlett. Um, to do that, you have to be paired up. You have to pair yourself up. We, we unfortunately can't do the matchmaking for you with a Bay Area based nonprofit organization to put that grant forward. Um, for the Creative Capital Grant, you apply directly as an artist. Um, but there's nothing that would disqualify you from applying to one if you are applying to the other. You can apply to both. Oh, and I, I guess maybe to put a finer point on that, if you've already applied to the Hewlett grant, that does not count as an application to the Creative Capital grant. You must submit a separate application to us because as you'll see, the, the scope of the grants are very different. Um, this is a great question. How many applicants were there in the most recent cycle? Um, how many advanced to the second round? 
Um, so for those of you who followed Creative Capital for a while, you might notice that the disciplinary categories um, are something that we used to do, we didn't have for a couple of years, and we're returning back to now. Um, so I can't give you any recent information on how many people applied just in visual arts, but I can tell you for the past couple of years, we've had over 4,000 applications. Um, so when we were only funding 35 artists, that was less than 1% uh, success rate. We now fund 50, um, so it's about 1%, um, but that's it, it's, it's an incredibly competitive grant. Um, for that reason, you should not be discouraged if you don't receive the grant the year, the first year, second year, third year that you apply. Um, every year we have different experts looking at the applications. Um, every year you are a different artist, you've learned things, you've done new things. Um, so even if you're not successful, we really encourage you always to apply again. It's incredibly competitive. Um, it doesn't mean that your work isn't amazing work. Um, it might just mean that the next year is the year for you. Right. Um, let's see, we only have a couple more minutes. I'm gonna try really hard to find questions uh, that I haven't answered at all, um, just so we get a, a broad range of information out there. Um, let's see. Um, 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 and again, if you have a very specific question about your project, feel free to email us. Um, here's one, it looks like letters of recommendation are no longer required, correct? Uh, that's correct. You're no longer required to submit letters of recommendation. Um, all of the changes that we've made to the letter of inquiry round this year are really with the goal of making this an easier experience for artists. We know it's a lot of work putting together a grant application. We know that the grant application cycle is very long. It's because we're a national open call process and we receive a huge volume of applications. We wanna make sure that we give each one um, a thorough review. Um, so we don't want this to be a more painful experience of application than it needs to be. So for that reason, we've tried to streamline the application a lot make it less of a burden on the artist. Um, so one of the things that we've done is gotten rid of the, the letters about, letter about a recommendation requirement. All right, um, let's see. Uh, um, answered some of these questions before. Um, is there a set number of work samples required? Um, you can submit up to five work samples. Uh, if you um, want to submit still images, you can submit up to five. If you wanna submit a uh, film or um, a video film, moving image or sound, um, you can submit up to five clips, um, but the total amount should be less than three minutes or less. Um, this is a good question. How important is it to have a website? My collaborator, friend and mentor uh, has never been interested in owning a computer. Um, it is not required to have a website. This is just an additional piece of information that you are optionally um, invited to submit to us. Really, again, we're going to be looking at your answers to the six questions and the power of your idea. That's our main focus. That's primarily what we are you know, um, evaluating in the letter of inquiry stage. So that's what, what, that's what counts. Um, if you don't have a website, it's okay. It's totally fine. All right. Um, oh, this is an interesting question. Um, so you might notice if you've already been in our application or if you've looked through the handbook um, that we ask you not only where you're based right now, but also where your hometown is. Um, we ask this because we know artists move around a lot, um, you know, especially if you live somewhere like New York or Los Angeles, um, you might have moved pretty recently um, and you might really still consider yourself aligned with other places around the country. Um, so we ask this just to get a better sense of who you are. Um, if you don't have a hometown or if your hometown is the same as where you are now, don't worry about it. Um, you can uh, put in that field um, something that reflects to you what feels most accurate um, in terms of what your hometown is and what information you want to, to give to us about where, you, where you've lived um, in, in the US um, or, or outside. Um, right. Uh, 
Does Creative Capital have another grant option for visual artists this year? Um, unfortunately, no. The visual arts competition will be next year in 2024. So if you're a visual artist um, and want to be evaluated primarily as a visual artist, that's the right category for you, um, please uh, come back to our website, come back to our info session next year for the 2024 cycle. Great. Um, let's see. Um, see if I can get in one more question. I know we have to wrap up very soon. Um, right. Uh, Someone's asking me to repeat the three criteria for evaluation. That's simple. Uh, it is um, innovation, feasibility slash capacity, and timeliness. Um, here's a good question. Um, so uh, if you are successful, this is probably a good one to uh, end on. We'll, we'll see if I can get maybe one more after this. Uh, for successful applicants, what is the timeline uh, for distributing funds? Um, so uh, the first disbursement will be once you sign an awardee agreement with us. Um, after that, uh, you um, have to meet with us. So when I heard a little bit about your project, uh, then you uh, are eligible for the second disbursement. Um, and then actually you tell us when the funds would be most useful to you. You can draw down funding at key pivotal moments um, in the development of the project. And again, most projects take around three to five years to complete. Um, all right. Oh, here's a good one. If judges know applicants, do they recuse themselves? Yes, uh, we ask all of our evaluators to fill out a conflict of interest form. So we know um, beforehand who knows whom, um, and we make sure that uh, people are not evaluating applications by, by artists that they have a relationship to. Um, all right. Um, oh, here's a good one to end on. Um, can you speak to the connection between UN sustainability goals and project drawdown in the review process for the projects? Um, this is something you might have noticed on our website or application handbook. Um, something that we're thinking a lot, as I'm sure many of you are as well, is the question of sustainability in the arts and also in the world. Um, if you're an artist who's working um, within the sustainability goals uh, defined by the UN, they have a very useful sort of um, uh, set of criteria, um, we would love to know that. Um, so you can describe that in the project content. Um, you know, it's something to sort of just flag in terms of what's, you know, sort of important to you in their practice. It doesn't affect, though, the sort of ultimate out, um, impact, uh, sorry, ultimate outcome of the award. Um, we'll just, uh, you know, if you are successful, we'll just note that yours is a project that is thinking about sustainability along those lines. Um, and then, okay, it's time to end, but I'll answer one more question because it's very quick. Um, can I speak more about the partnership that we have with Kickstarter? Yes. Um, if you've been to our website, you've noticed that we have a partnership with Kickstarter and the Skoll Foundation. This is really something um, being taken care of by Kickstarter. If you are a creative a creator of color with an active Kickstarter campaign, you can um, amplify your campaign, um, and we, in connection with the School Foundation, um, can help that amplification. So um, it's not something that Creative Capital has much uh, sort of oversight on in terms of the project selected. It's all up to Kickstarter. Um, we're really an entity that's allowing those projects to receive that additional amplification. So for more details on that, please check out our website. Um, and if you have an active campaign on Kickstarter, you might especially wanna check out our website. It's unfortunately time for us to end. If I didn't get to your question, please do email us. Um, my colleague Isaac will drop the email in the chat one more time. It's also on our website so you can find it. Thank you all so much for attending the info session today. And I can't wait to learn more about your exciting, groundbreaking project ideas. So thank you so much for joining us.